Hi everyone, my name is Sinead Fox Hamilton from Chartered Accountants Ireland. I'm a Relationship and Professional Development Manager here and today I want to showcase to you our Finance for Managers programme and to do that I am delighted to have Course Director Brian Fain join us. So thank you so much for coming along. You're very welcome Brian. How are you doing? I'm great Sinead, thanks for having me today. No, it's fantastic to have you along to maybe do a bit of a 101, a showcase of this programme and find out what it's all about. But before we do that, what about a bit of an introduction, if you wouldn't mind? Sure. Well, I'm Brian Fian. I'm a course director for the Finance for Managers suite of qualifications at Chartered Accountants Ireland. I also support a number of other of the professional development qualifications at the Institute, including corporate finance and financial reporting. I think, as you know, Sinead, I run my own online school of finance. And before that, I spent a little over 20 years in the financial services industry, uh, leading a number of businesses in wealth management, in asset finance and in investment management. So a varied and experienced CV. There you have, Brian. We hope so. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, look, what about we get into the meat of today's conversation, which is focusing on the Finance for Managers program. What is it all about, Brian? Sure. Well, I think, you know, traditionally in Chartered Accountants Ireland, we, we train uh, accountants and then we work with accountants on their professional development. But of course, as we all know, you know, while accountants do have leadership positions in business, the vast majority of people who actually are in management positions uh, don't come from a financial background at all. They come from sales, they come from HR, compliance, risk, um, all sorts of areas. And it's most likely that they've not actually had much of a grounding in the fundamentals of finance. And when you think about finance as the language of business, every decision you're going to have to make in business is going to have a financial dimension to it. And it's very hard to make a really good decision without being fully informed about that. Now, you will have your finance controller, your CFO in your corner, but in order for you to be able to to debate the decision and the key points of the decision with them, you really need that grounding. So the whole idea of the Finance for Managers program is it helps managers from non-financial backgrounds eliminate that blind spot and helps them make better business decisions. And in terms of the ideal participant then, who, who should be thinking about enrolling in this particular program? Sure. So it's really anybody who's in a managerial position or in a decision making position or who has responsibility for budget or indeed aspires to be in that kind of situation. And skill wise, what what are the participants going to learn? Sure. So really, uh, the course is broken down into a number of different components. But fundamentally, what we will do is we'll start by immersing participants in the whole area of financial reporting uh, and financial statements so that they fully understand and can interpret those reports and understand what they are telling them about the business. We'll then move on to the whole area of uh, understanding costing and pricing and budgeting, because that's a, a process that pretty much everyone is exposed to in a managerial capacity. And then we'll move on from there to looking at more strategic matters, including capital investment, investment appraisal, and strategic financial management decisions. Brilliant, really varied actually. Is it fair to say, Brian, that this is a fairly new proposition, I suppose, for Chartered Accountants Ireland here, and that I suppose our, our own members are going to be equipped, you would you know, expect, with the, the knowledge and the skills built into this program? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So I guess, you know, it's been something of a gap, I think, that we've recognized at the Institute for some years in our offering. I mean, we are uh, and certainly hold ourselves out to be, you know, the leading uh, institute the leading professional body when it comes to financial education and uh, we have rightly i suppose focused on our members uh, professional development over the years uh, but it became apparent to us some time ago that this was something that we really needed to address and what is the message for our members for their organizations why is it important they i suppose they know about this yeah, I think it's really interesting. Like if you look at uh, the, the role of the chartered accountant in business uh, as, you know, the finance business partner, and of course, we, we've many uh, chartered accountants who are operating as CEOs and indeed in, in other parts of their organizations, but they tend to be the go-to person on all things finance. So if you have, uh, you know, I suppose, a, a head of HR or a learning and development lead in an organization looking at managerial skills development for the non-financial cohort, 
uh, they will be looking at these kind of programs. And I guess the message for our members is to be aware that we're now offering this program. And of course, we've already run it. I think we're going to talk about that in a moment. And what we want to make sure is that we can help equip their organizations and the managerial talent, their bench strength in their organizations with these skill sets now. And say if one of our members is aware of a colleague who might benefit from the programme or who has an interest in the programme, who could they reach out to them? Sure. Well, I think we're going to include some, some details at the end, but I actually have it up on a poster here on my screen. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, you, you can contact diplomas at charteraccountants.ie. That's the email address. You can also go visit the Chartered Accountants site. So it's charteraccountants.ie. All of our resources are there, but what you're interested in there is the professional development section on the site. You click on professional development and within that we have our diplomas uh, section. And in that, uh, with alongside of our, all of our diplomas there, you will find the finance for managers program. Very expertly relayed, Brian. Perfect. <laughs> and tell me this, I suppose if an organization perhaps has a group of team members that might be interested in the program, is there an option to facilitate that, say, in an in-house training capacity? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we have an in-house team in Chartered Accountants Ireland. We run in-house courses all the time. And what I would say is that anybody watching, uh, if there is, if you have critical mass, and what by that we're, it's not a big number, really. I think if you've got kind of six or more uh, people who would be suitable for a program like this, we can, if you want, structure this as in-house training. And that allows us to customize a little bit more in terms of the timetable, tweak the content a little bit, but it's really about, uh, you know, delivering it and serving the organization in a way that that works best for both the the business and also the people doing the course uh, our contact for any in-house training queries it's on the uh, course brochure but the other post I have on the other side here <laughs> is our good colleague uh, Anthony Fox uh, so Anthony is the the go-to person for this so you'll find Anthony at anthony.fox at charteraccountants.ie his details are also on the finance for managers program brochure and I think we're going to try and include them at the end of the, this this session as well we will indeed so anybody that um, struggle to maybe jot those down we'll pop them at the, the tail end of the video now, you mentioned there, Brian, earlier, and uh, as, you, as you expected, I'm going to ask you about it. This isn't the first item for the program, the Finance for Managers program. Tell me about the experience um, of the delivery that you had recently. Yeah, sure, Sinead. So we had, uh, you know, I guess built the program uh, last year and we had brought it out to market and uh, we were fortunate in securing uh, our first mandate uh, just in uh, in the autumn. We ran the program for uh, this company in November. Uh, we are um, looking at doing a, a piece uh, on a kind of spotlight on the program with them. So I won't say who they are, but they're in the medical uh, sector. Very interesting. Uh, our business and they brought to us uh, a number of uh, their manager cohort uh, from from sales from logistics from admin and um, none of these people actually had any uh, financial background at all and I think the objective of the company was that they had a lot of foresight really in terms of what they were doing I suppose all of these people would fall into that category of, of, of person I spoke to earlier. So, you know, they have very strong skill sets in what they do, but finances is, is something they have a little bit of a blind spot on. And yet they're involved, you know, day to day, uh, month to month in, in decisions that have financial implications. So they didn't want these people to be shy uh, and maybe fearful in contributing to that financial dimension of, of debate in, in business decisions. And they also, I guess, wanted to uh, invest in their people and that I, I think that's a really important uh, you know element of this now that you know post pandemic you know we now know that there's a need to be more agile uh, and for organizations and their people to be more resilient and adaptable so i think that kind of multidiscipline uh, skill base is really important and i think that company had a lot of foresight in uh, in in investing in their people and, and giving them an accredited qualification in that respect so you know the the, the experience of the program was was beyond even my expectations uh, i was surprised at how 
quickly and at how deep we were able to go actually so I, I can try and calibrate if you like the learning based on the uh, you know the caliber of the people doing it and and uh, their level of experience because some people may know a little bit about finance and um, but I think it was just the nature of the kind of the immersive learning we do really allowed us to, to get quite far and I was really delighted with that the, the output and the feedback and the testimonials we got from from the company and from the participants was really excellent so very very pleased about that and, and looking forward to doing some more. Fantastic. And as you say, and as you alluded there, we'll be doing a spotlight piece on that particular organization. Yep. And it's great to bring this program to the market, both in that in-house um, capacity or format, and also then the open program. Um, and we'll talk about the details of when that is going live just shortly. But what about the practical elements? There's going to be people tuning in here, Brian, and they want to know what's involved. What are the assessments like? Talk to me about the practicalities of the program. Sure. So, uh, I mean, in terms of what it involves, uh, we've condensed this program a little bit from our original plan uh, because I think people need a little bit more flexibility and, and maybe signing up for a very long program is not ready for everyone's cup of tea. So what we do is um, it's, it's delivered fully online. The centerpiece of the program are four uh, sessions. So we do four virtual classrooms and we run those on Wednesdays, but we run them two weeks apart. So that's eight weeks effectively. An eight week block completes the online learning in the program. Uh, each of those sessions, they run on alternate Wednesdays. Uh, it's more or less a full day. I mean, it's, it's 10 till 12, 30 and two till four. Uh, so you certainly have a little bit of time to top and tail on the day, um, but that is the commitment that's involved. And the reason we space them out over uh, two weeks as opposed to every week is because there is a little bit of work to be done before and after each session. So in terms of assessment, in terms, sorry, in terms of preparation, first of all, we have um, a whole uh, library of kind of micro learning uh, video tutorials and full deck of notes, pre-reading and exercises for everybody to do. So there's probably about two to two and a half hours of work to do to prep for each session. And what that means is that you come to the virtual classroom ready. You come, you know, with, with some basic concepts and probably an awful lot of questions actually. And then we use the virtual classrooms to go deep into those, use the practical examples, work in teams, uh, really, I suppose, to collaborate and get that sort of sense of what these concepts are like when they work in practice. There's multiple choice question uh, assessments one, two, and three. So after module one, two, and three, uh, we have a, a kind of MCQ online on our Moodle platform to, if you like, capture the learnings and, and hopefully bank some good marks towards your qualification. And then at the end of the program, when we're finished, uh, we actually release the capstone assignment a little bit early, we release it after module three. But at the end of module four, final virtual classroom, within another two weeks to complete that, uh, that accounts for 70% of the marks whereas the, uh, the, the three MCQs give you 30% of the marks. So all told, eight weeks, four virtual classrooms, and then two weeks at the end of that to complete the, uh, the, the assignment. And so I suppose 10 weeks from start to finish, and then hopefully everybody's over the line. Exactly. Brilliant. And that all important then qualification under, under their belt. Super. Brian, sometimes there's probably a trepidation or a, a nervousness from folk coming from a non-financial background immersing themselves in a program like this. What would you say to them? Yeah, I think this is a very common theme. Uh, you know, the, the very fact that people are fearful of accounting, finance, numbers, because they don't have familiarity with familiarity with it means, that, you know, that there are people out there who might be even worried about signing up for the program because they're afraid of exposing themselves or kind of showing that they have this kind of uh, blind spot. It, I suppose the most important thing to point out is that this is not uh, rocket science at all, okay? Uh, none of the concepts uh, we will uh, introduce and none of the kind of techniques and skills we will learn involve complicated maths, okay? So like uh, honors maths is not required, okay? Uh, you don't have to have, you know, an A-level or, or, or a H1 in, in higher maths to do this it's about basic numeracy and the good news is you can use a calculator so if you can operate a calculator uh, you, you can actually do this course okay and um, really it's about um understanding how to apply these concepts and what they actually mean you're always going to have a finance expert we're not trying to teach people to be accountants or finance directors or cfos we're trying to make sure that people are confident enough to interpret the information and to probe and to ask the right questions to help make better decisions that's really what it's about so 
don't please have any fears about the program. Uh, well, I know from the experience we've had that people were pleasantly surprised uh, when when they did the program that we talked about in November. And um, so, yes, of course, there's numbers involved. Can't get away from that. Uh, but um, don't worry, you don't need to uh, be, be a maths nerd to, to do this program. Yeah, and I think it's important that we touch on that. You don't need to be a maths wizard as long as there's a numerical aptitude there. And I know, Brian, you'll walk everybody through everything from the base level up to there. In good sure. hands. <laughs> what about the element of personalized coaching that I know is an option for the, the program? Can you tell me a wee bit about that, Brian? Sure. So I guess we, we, you know, based on some feedback, we've decided to incorporate this into the program. Uh, so it's an optional extra, if you will, Sinead. Um, and really, it's all about customization. Uh, so I think there will be inevitably people who do this program who may have you know a very specific uh, need or a particular challenge in mind um, <clears throat> it could be for example having a better understanding of their uh, their their p l or their, their their business budget or a capital investment proposal that they're looking at or it could be <clears throat> a more significant transaction and i think in that context they might need more help quickly uh, to try and understand how to take away the learnings of the program and apply them directly to that particular challenge or issue issues that they're looking at. So that's what coaching is all about. Uh, we go for deeper insights. Uh, we have we structure it so that over the course of the program, you've got four one to one sessions um, and they're 45 minutes each. <clears throat> but there's a little bit of prep work involved in, in setting out what your specific set of challenges are so that we can dial in directly to those in the coaching. And the idea is that you come away from the coaching with very specific actionable steps that will help you tackle those challenges and hopefully improve your your influence and your, your leadership impact in the organization. And that option, Brian, do you have to select it when enrolling on the program or is there a flexibility? You know, I suppose early days, once you come onto the program, you've had to think about it. Can you, can you add it on then? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's right, Sinead. So, I mean, look, if, if you, some people will know straight off that they need this. So uh, please do sign up day one if you're, if you're clear on that. And uh, we do have limited capacity. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we, we say that you should do that. But certainly uh, we can accept people into the coaching program and people can decide even after uh, our first session. We, I think we've given a window of a couple of days after the first live virtual classroom uh, for people just to reflect on it and see, look, if, if it's for them. Brilliant. Good to know there's a wee bit of flexibility there. Well, look, Brian, it's been a really great conversation. I suppose in, in wrapping up, I have another question for you, which is just around the brand recognition brand recognition piece, I suppose. Um, Non-accountants might not be as familiar with Chartered Accountants Ireland as members are and the clout that comes with the, the brand. Why should someone consider doing this course with us versus, say, another training provider? Sure. Yeah, I, I think that, like that's a really good question. And the bottom line is, is that, you know, I think if you're if you're just curious or if a little bit of financial knowledge is kind of like a nice to have, uh, of course, you can buy a good book. You can hop on YouTube. You can do, you know, a kind of a cheap and cheerful online course to maybe learn learn some financial language. Right. <clears throat> that's not what this course is. This course is for people who are really, I suppose, serious about incorporating skills into their daily managerial lives uh, or who have ambitions to be in that situation so they can change the quality of their decisions in business. It's a very immersive environment. Uh, what we do in the virtual classrooms is all kind of uh, real life um, kind of case study type situations. Uh, we challenge people to actually practice the application of the skills and the decision making. So it's very hands on. And the idea is that you come away with those practical skills. And of course, you come away with an accredited qualification from Chartered Accountants Ireland, which is which is nice to have on your CV. Absolutely. And that certificate level, isn't that right, Brian? Exactly. Perfect. And a great CV edition, as, as you rightly said. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming along and sharing all those insights today. It's an exciting program and, and I've no doubt it'll be a, a huge success. Now, before we wrap up, can you remind everyone tuning in, when is the next open program then kicking off? Yes, Sinead. So we're on track to start our next program on the 4th of May. Uh, so please make sure you're enrolled before then. So Wednesday, the 4th of May is the first live virtual classroom. I think we'll accept people right up until the deadline, uh, but we do have limited places. So please go ahead and uh, follow the details and, and get yourself registered. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can talk to the membership experience team as well. Uh, they can go through any questions you have on the program. Brilliant. 
Well, Brian, thank you so much. That is everything I wanted to cover off today. Thank you all for tuning in. As Brian said, any queries, please do reach out and we'll pop the details um, at the very tail end of today's video. So thanks again, everyone. And until next time, bye for now. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Sinead.